I want my sex tonight. You put me like with drunk people, nobody will have sex with someone like you. <gasps> This is so she sad. has a problem that she needs to see a doctor before she has sex with someone. I was I was working with her on that. Muhammad. <laughs> I don't want to cry, but no. Devar. No, no, get your straight, you know. Please. I, 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 I can't enjoy what you're talking about. Or what? <laughs> this is upsetting. That is freaking disrespectful. Devar. Do you want to see for what? Yeah. Or what? Or what you're going to do? Devar. So you're crying now to make people feel sorry? <laughs> Who's drunk? You are drunk! Muhammad, are you leaving us? Yeah. Muhammad decides he's had enough. Hi, I'm Leo, and welcome back to free therapy that you should be paying for. Why don't you take a seat right over there? Well, maybe not you, but someone should pay me. I'm unlicensed, and I don't care. I think I just want to go on record and say any time that you say that a woman's boos smells on live television, <laughs> you've lost the battle. You've, you've lost. Yeah, well, this is what we're dealing with today on 90 Day Fiance. I thought that Big Ed was the craziest man. They want to kiss Rose. I really do. Really I've come to learn that a man by the name of Colt might take his place and now, seriously, a man by the name of Mohammed is there with his partner Daniel. Now I've done a few episodes on the series, I genuinely like I thought maybe I could do one and I would get bored. I'm not bored of this, this is like insane in the membrane. <laughs> This is a crazy series. Uh, but the tell-all usually is like the part that people skip over, nobody really cares. Muhammad and Daniel, their tell-all is probably the most like one. I've never heard someone get so rowdy over a person before. And I was on team Muhammad very slightly until I saw this. Now I'm on team NyQuil because I just want to sleep. But uh, today we're going to take a look at one of the most crazy tell-alls I think I've ever seen. Just again, don't, don't. Don't talk about people's genitalia and how they smell on, you know, national television. That's kind of, that's a bitch move. Uh, also, if you'd like to subscribe, that would be great. Um, that way I could finally finish my degree on psychology. I'm a, uh, what am I, a therapist? Oh, shit. See, if you just subscribe, I can actually get enough money to go to school to figure out which class I even need to take. Thank you. Oh, all you gotta do, uh, follow me on 16leo underscore and if you want to see something that's less rowdy but more rowdy in different ways follow my other channel it's called leo all you have to do is subscribe and you see some crazy stuff that's not like daniel and muhammad we do things we go out kind of like daniel and muhammad but we don't fight Okay, if you haven't caught up with the series, Daniel and Muhammad, they're a couple on 90 Day Fiance. They got married. I have no idea why. You couldn't find two mismatched people. They're like socks that come in different color shapes and sizes. But they decided I'm going to get married, possibly because Muhammad wanted to get out to Tunisia and likes America, possibly because Daniel cannot be independent. Who knows? The marriage did not work, and we've gotten to the point that they started fighting Danielle, starts stalking him, starts uh, looking at his browser history and like following him to different cities. Muhammad is someone who has almost zero charm, and he is just not good at handling situations, even when he wants to get what he wants, which is to stay in America. He's just really blunt, and a lot of the time it comes off as really mean. So both both the people here have a lot to learn from, and neither of them want to learn. That's what we've got right now. Let me take you over to Sean Robinson, my favorite. Hi everybody, I'm Brett Robinson. Joining me are Devar and Daya. Oh, I'm sorry, she changed her name to Brett Robinson now. Remember when that happened? Me neither, but I was bored, so I had to do something. Paula and Ru Daya, Russ and Daya, Lauren and Alexi and Daya. Who the hell's Daya? Anyway, uh, so there's lots of other people and they weigh in. I don't know who any of those people are. Maybe I'll learn some of them. I probably won't. But uh, what I do want to you know, look at is Daniel and Muhammad because at the end of this episode or during the middle, they kick everyone else out and they're like, bro, you guys need to sort your shit out. And that's where it gets crazy. But the lead up is just as bad. Let's see. And all the way from Thailand, Muhammad and Danielle, probably the most talked about couple this season. Either one of you, you wanna tell us the latest? 
Ooh, okay. Well, they're looking lovely. Um, Muhammad not even looking at Daniel or anyone. So that's that's a good start to this show. He's also got uh, a mini soul patch. I've never seen a, a soul patch so mini. It looks like it could be an accident. And he's got a mini uh, chin fluff, bum fluff. I don't know what you call it. I did not know enough about Daniel before I uh, married her. I didn't. Like, I feel like it's like a different person for me. It's a different person from you. God, I would hope so. You are not marrying yourself, hopefully. But yeah, okay. Well, that's an honest breakdown of the situation. Maybe they just didn't know each other. Sometimes people get married. You don't even know the person's last name till you take it. Yeah, it sounds stupid, but it, it's philosophical, I guess. I was expecting, like way much better than I find out when I came here. So I just started like facing like big challenges in my life, trying the, to fix the mess. Okay, fair enough. But um, I, I don't know what Daniel told Muhammad to get him to the States, but I know that my best thing that I can do to anyone watching this is try and give somewhat real advice. I feel like in relationships, you can't be putting false expectations on anyone, especially if you haven't even met them. You gotta just know that if you like the person enough, the situation is not going to matter. Because situations change. As Asha says, situations will arise. That's what, that's what Asha said. And you know Asha, this is a real story. He paid strippers in Usher bucks. I didn't even know that was a thing. He created his own currency for strippers. If anyone knows how to do things, it's that guy. So we trust Usher. I forgot what I was saying. Ah, yeah, it's the relationship thing. Yeah, don't have expectations. I mean, I'm not saying expect nothing, but the more you expect, the more you have room for someone to let you down. And especially when you're getting to know someone, it's better to know what you can expect of yourself, set those boundaries. And if someone crosses them, then you can be like, well, that's different. As opposed to, I was expecting a good life. But she's a fat and smelly puss. No. Do you feel that you did not know Muhammad? Yeah, because what he showed me when I went to visit ain't the person that came here. You feel that he changed? Sean, Sean, ask what she, f this is the problem with the, my favorite host. Sean, I need a picture of her on my wall. She will, one, never break up a fight because uh, she has zero control. And two, whenever someone says something poignant, she skips the fuck over it. This woman just said Muhammad wasn't the person in Tunisia that he was in America. And she's like, oh, well, that sounds interesting. Ask why, what changed? Come on, Sean. Right after he came to the United yeah. States. Yes. Oh then, my God. Went, Cause then when I went to see him, he showed me the affection. He didn't show me the affection hardly at all. Mm -hmm. But why did you tolerate that? Wait, 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 that's a good, thank you, Daniel, for actually expanding on what you were saying. So basically she said she got duped. She went to Tunisia and she saw this man and he was uh, apparently affectionate and hardworking. And when he came here, he was despondent and lazy, which is, you know, I think that's a, I don't know their relationship, but maybe that's an actual thing. Maybe the reason he was despondent and lazy was because of all the challenges that got put in front of him. But this is an interesting thing to explore. Of course, we won't be doing that because Sean doesn't ask those questions, but hopefully we'll get to the bottom of this. Every time something like that happens, he's on the phone calling the cops. For I have 10 police reports on me. No, oh, that's not a flex, Daniel. <laughs> she said it like, yo, he keeps calling the cops on me. I got 10 reports. Shit, I ain't even done nothing, man. Come on. I, what is even the... I would love to hear that story. I would love to know the Ohio Police Department. Hello? Uh, Muhammad, again? Yes. All right, we'll send someone over. Jesus. I don't know. I guess she constantly packed his bags and stuff. Um, I feel like that's wrong. I feel like... Uh, this is just my personal opinion. I feel like sometimes people react so emotionally, they forget to act logically to a situation. If someone constantly pushes your limit and your boundary, you can be like, yo, uh, this is it for me. I need you to not do that again. And that's, that's it. Because if she had his clothes sitting outside, she constantly took them back in. The problem with Danielle is that Muhammad wants a divorce and he wants to be out of her life, but she won't let him leave. So I don't know what to say. You did not take this process serious. I took it serious. I'm the one that did all the paperwork and paid for everything. But did you do the paperwork? I like how Sean just like tries to pin this on both of them. It feels like you didn't take this seriously, Mohammed. No. All right, shit. It feels like you didn't take this seriously, Danielle. No, I paid for it. Oh, crap.
It feels like 90 Day Fiance is a joke of a show, guys. It really does. 90 days to marry someone? My panties are 90 days old. I did the paperwork because I loved him and wanted to build a life with him. How did you know he was the one, though? That's what I don't understand. That's like, that's... Oh my god, Sean is so bad at this that, like, the other contestants are like, Yo, okay, uh, how did you know he was the one? Because Sean asked, were you in love or did you just want to get married? And Danielle answered, but nobody asked, why do you know that he in particular was the guy that you thought you loved? Good question, lady. Sean, please. Because of the way he treated me when I went to see him, he even sent me, hardly no one knows this. That's why there's issues. He knew my finances. Okay, if hardly no one knows this, then everyone knows this. I know that's just a way of talking, but this is going to get a little annoying. Oh my God. Hardly no one knows this, Shauna. I mean, Sean, but since we're on 90 Day Fiance, hardly no one's going to know about my... In a, in a bit. He sent me money to buy shoes for one of my daughters one time. The single minute that he starts going on trips, me, I would have bought him a one-way ticket back to his country and said, hasta la vista, baby. He's not from hasta la vista, baby. Please stop with a weird stereotypical. Every time someone ever said bye to Muhammad on the show, they use some like weird stereotypical like, arrivederci. <laughs> like, um, why do they not just say it in English? Like, I get he's not a native English speaker. Can we chill with that? Also, it's very, very rich of this lady who's sitting next to the uh, handsome black man over there. How You have zero contact. If that was you, you would have done that. It's not you. People have attachments that they sometimes feel it's almost too hard to get rid of. People deal with situations in different ways. You can't just say, if that was me, I would have done. But it's not you. We have to figure out how the person who's dealing with this can do it in the healthiest way that they're able to. Also, Muhammad has not said a word. He's like doing the thing where like in Dragon Ball Z, you're just powering off. He's spur He's getting ready to spur bomb people. You know when you see Goku just with his hands up and you're like, damn, are the police there? Why are your hands up? And then like 10 minutes later, he blows up the world. This is what's gonna happen. Okay, by a show of hands, how many of you believe that Muhammad loved Danielle? I thought the question was how many of you believe? Well, okay, this is <laughs> this is gang up therapy. I love it. Sean asks another question. How many people believe Daniel? Oh, sorry, Muhammad actually loved Daniel. That's my answer. I don't know what yours is. Please tell me in the comments. By a show of hands, how many of you believe that Muhammad loved Daniel? No one. Oh, oh shit. That counts as I think he loved, sure, it. Okay. I think he loved yeah. the idea. I personally have never seen this man do anything affectionate towards this woman. Like even from episode one when he came late to the airport and when she came to hug him, he just turned around and it was like a long lost dad. And this woman was like, oh, I found you. And then he just hugged her as if he like was one of those smug dads who was like, yeah, I came back from Ziggy's. <sighs> oh yeah, yeah, I got a daughter. Yeah, how you doing? How's school? <sighs> Like, no remorse, no, oh, I'm so happy to see you. I haven't seen them in Tunisia. I've never seen their texts. Just feels like this was never romantically charged ever, in my opinion. So I don't know. My hand would be down. So for the first five minutes of the show, Muhammad stays silent. He pleads the fifth. He, he knows uh, the American amendments. He loves them. He wants to be an American. And that's what he, you know, he's seeking his reparations on air. The next scene is him talking about Louisa, that girl who randomly came into his life. He randomly moved to Miami with her and then she randomly moved out of his life. Remember her? Yeah, me neither. My friend, she was trying to help me. So what's wrong with that? My like, question is like, who is Larissa? Yeah, who is Larissa? Thank you, man. Her, her name was Louisa. He said it and this dude with all confidence. Who is Licorice? Hmm? Who is Lorraine, bitch? Tell me who Larry is. Who? Louisa, she's a friend of mine. Mm -hmm. She used to be a friend of mine. The the look from those two girls, as he says, she's a friend of mine, tells you literally everything you need to know. Platonicity in relationships gets harder after a certain age. It's not impossible, but it's uh, uncommon because sometimes when you're married and then you make friends beyond that, again, there's nothing wrong with it and I don't think that it's impossible. I just think that sometimes we have to look at the why. And in terms of Muhammad's life, he was technically still married, but this girl just came into his life. Yes, maybe he thought of her as just a friend, but her motives were completely different. I don't know what they were. That wasn't no friendship, man. Our major problems was like bigger than just Louisa, okay? Yeah, but it didn't help Muhammad. It didn't, it, it might have not like made it, it wasn't the catalyst in your problems, but it didn't make it better. You know what I mean? It's like, say you have a problem with uh, raising your kids. 
right? And your name's Daryl. And you're like, man, I'm shit at raising my kids. And then you also happen to smoke crack. Maybe that's not the cause, but it doesn't help. You know, is that an everything smoking crack now helps you raise your kids unless if it does then i i would try it i don't have kids but i would try it just forget that i said that i would have probably hit you when you looked at her and said she owes you she doesn't owe you a damn thing don't 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 admit to um um i don't don't admit to assault on television <laughs> You're crazy. <laughs> what the fuck was that? <laughs> don't hit men. Don't, don't hit women. Don't hit men. Don't hit anyone. Don't hit on people sometimes. The only thing you need to do is hit high intensity interval training. <laughs> don't hit people. Okay. She brought you here into this country. That doesn't give you a fucking right to hit someone. I'm sorry. I'm just, I don't know what the thing is where certain people are like, mm, now, because I did this for you. This is such a, that is like the mentality of someone who is going downhill, for real. This is not like, oh, I did this for you and you do this for me. I mean, if she was a guy saying the very same thing, everyone would spear tackle her off the show. I don't, I don't agree with that logic, lady. I don't even know who you are. Who the fuck is that guy? Doesn't she deserve to know? She's owed an explanation, not owed a person. Do you get what I'm saying, everyone? Can we agree on that? She's owed an explanation, especially if she's married. I think the communication of Muhammad was absolutely vile and horrible. I think Danielle did deserve better in terms of the communication. He should have said, I'm seeing other chicks. I want to fuck them or whatever. Great. At least that's honest. She can oh, okay, I don't like you, blah, blah, blah. There, it can move on. But having zero communication leaves her in the dark. She's just gonna be an anxious mess and she's not good under pressure. It's probably not right. If you had some sort of care for her, you would have let her know. Maybe she wouldn't have bugged you as much if she knew exactly what you were gonna do there. Anyway, you know, she doesn't own Muhammad and shouldn't ever try. And he should try and explain it to her. That, those, that would have probably helped. One of the trips, was like going to see the lawyer with Louisa that she was offering me help because in that time that I went to see Louisa, I was almost done with Daniel. I mean, okay, yeah, uh, that was a lot to take in. Okay, actually, maybe the lie is better than the truth because imagine hearing the truth. D uh, Muhammad, what are you doing? And then he's like, I'm going with Louisa, that girl I met from Facebook to see a lawyer to get a case against you because I hate you. Also, she is sexy. Maybe I can get action in every single way. That would be like a bit much. Not only is he like leaving her, but he's leaving her to see a lawyer while banging the school. That's, you, you know what? Maybe he should have lied. I don't understand if you are so unhappy here. Why didn't yes, you I just am. go back? <laughs> She's like in the middle of like, if you were so unhappy. Yes. Unhappy? Yes. That keyword. You win bingo. Unhappy. Crappy. He just like in the middle of the sentence. That was so funny. Oh, that's a great question, lady. That's a great question. If you were so unhappy, why did you not go back to Tunisia? Let's see. We sat down, me and her, and she made like tons of promises. And like, like what, Danielle? What? what did you promise that we don't know? Yeah. This is a way, this is the craziest deflection I think I've ever seen. She asked a very legitimately good question. And you know, there are times in the series that uh, Muhammad has been like, I left all my family. And it's like, well, you know, it's not Danielle's fault that you did that. You chose to do that. And it's not like Tunisia doesn't exist now. You can go back at any time. So like every now and again, I'm like, hmm, I don't know why. I, I can see he really likes America for some reason i don't mean it like that like he likes it way more than tunisia seemingly but doesn't really put in the effort to make himself useful there does that mean is that too deep maybe i'm should smoke some crack you know i'll be good with my kids <laughs> all right let's go when you're the only one working and providing for you and my kids that's a lot of stress there is a lot of stress. I mean, firstly, uh, teacher, you should probably shouldn't have had all those, you know, kids with someone that you, uh, that, that was a, you know, that you, you know what I mean? Like maybe, maybe that was a decision a long time ago, but then like getting this guy into your life and then choosing to then support him as well as the kids when you didn't have money issues, that's a bad decision on everybody's part. It's bad. Shame on you, Muhammad, for even coming down there with like knowing she has money problems. Danielle, sh half shame on you for expecting him to fully fix your situation. Both of y'all just expected so much from each other and got so little. This is what happens 
when you just expect and you don't give. Great relationships are about the other person giving and then the other person loving them so much that they want to give as well. And neither of them expecting things of the other. That's a fantastic relationship. This is not that. <laughs> Muhammad, before you met Danielle, had you ever tried Tinder, Bumble, Hinge, Grinder, Hinge, Door Hinge, Sex Cult to come to the United States to live? Oh, same thing. I was living in a good country, doing fine, working, having a job, have my car and everything. I was fine. Because as you know, there are a lot of people who feel that the only reason. So this goes back to the same thing. Like, uh, Muhammad is like, man, my life was good. I had a car. Sort of weird flex but okay so if it was like you know fine and you had your family and your car there why didn't you go back like what was keeping you like is it just that he's so stubborn that he's like yeah just because my marriage doesn't work out doesn't mean i'm not gonna walk out in miami which is where i live i don't i don't understand like what his need to stay in america is because he has no family there and he hates Ohio. So like to me, it's just been like, what What was the real reason? And he never really ever said, he just likes the place, I guess. The only reason that you're here is because you fell in love with this woman. Are you still using drugs? Oh, I thought she was gonna say, you still using drugs, oh my God. Muhammad's last name? Sean, you should say one out of pocket thing, like just when people are like, you know, dozing off on their TVs. Are you still using methamphetamine? Ha, huh, got you. That's that's what you get for not paying attention. On 90 Day Fiance, we'll be right back after this ad for drug use. And it's on all my IDs and things, so that's why I still use it. Nobody just like, imagine like just wearing pants because you still have them, they don't fit you, your arse just falls out of it every time. That's the weirdest thing to say. Like, Danielle's clinging on to the idea of like marriage walking out or somewhere deep down, she's like, this is gonna fix things. It's probably not gonna happen and removing the last name would probably set you free a little more as opposed to every time you look at your own last name, you're like, what could have been? That's, I don't know, that feels like it's just self inflicted. It's really sad. I do feel sorry for her at times. Not many, but sometimes. Did anybody ever say to you, get a job, you fatty? <laughs> sorry. It's a young, hot guy like this wanting to date an older woman like yourself. Okay, well, sorry. After the break, Sean comes back. She removes everyone else. She's like, yo, F this noise. All I need is you and Muhammad to tell me what it is, what it do, how y'all living. I just made a lot of that up. But so she gets them in a room so they can isolate, really talk to each other. This is genuinely now a therapy session with Sean Robinson, one of the worst therapists ever in history. But Hey, she looks great. Why would a young, attractive man be interested in me? Mm -hmm. Is what they said. Yeah, okay, Sean. That was a great, great starting question. So, Danielle, um, has anybody said to you why your fat, lazy ass would ever attract someone who's hot, sensual, Tunisian, beautiful, from Northern Africa? ever go out with you you look like a fucking doe canna was that i'm sorry is that is that okay guys can i ask that could you maybe not phrase it like that sean feels like it's a bit insulting to danielle don't you think that was the first question you had she could have just said do you know did you ever think you were maybe being catfished or this man had ulterior motives <laughs> oh wow sean and did you ever think well of course i can i've got a lot going for myself not only yeah. uh, whoa, 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 not only that sean i just want to say she dropped a dude who was like fitter than this guy. Remember in the earlier season, Danielle was seeing that one dude who liked her and she left him on red? I forgot his name, but that dude was ripped and everything and I thought it was a catfish, but it wasn't. They met at the ice skating rink and she just dropped him like a bad habit for no reason. Danielle can pull these man bitches. I don't know how, but she, <laughs> I, I am playing. And certainly your family and friends told you to watch out from the beginning. Yeah. What did they say to you? Watch out from the beginning. That's what they said. Yeah, okay. Daniel makes a fantastic point. I gotta say it. Like sometimes it's, uh, looks are important, I would say. For me anyway, I don't think they're important for everyone, but I think they're 
important for the initial attraction, but if you don't have a good personality, soul, or emotionally able to take care of someone, how can you, you know, it's hard to fall in love without that emotional bond. Pretty faces, it's not as hard to come by as a pretty soul. And you can't see a pretty soul on the outside. You have to get to know them. So I guess that's why she fell for him. But it, I mean, it doesn't hurt that he's a, a good looking guy, right? Is he? I don't know. They just felt that he wasn't here for the right reasons. So the question that people ask, did you use her? Drugs, methamphetamine at any point up your bum when you came to America. And do you still have some on you right now? Because I need some. Is that the question? What's the question? Her to get your green card. Tell us why you left okay i did left daniel because he said that like it's uh like it's an essay and he had a word limit and he had to speak i did lift danielle because she is a big personally don't like it to be not in relationship feel good thank you amen jesus good she was giving me the worst life that a man can have <laughs> This is where it starts. I'm so oh, God. Oh, you can't say that. What the worst life a man can have? Holy shit. You know what they say? Gillette, the best a man can get. Danielle, the worst a man can have. Like, bro, I can't. This is, this is mean. That's mean. That's so mean. Danielle's a human being. That's mean. From the day one. That seems really extreme. That's, it's mean. It's extreme. She's a human being. She lied to me, but not only about her finances, about everything. She never told me that she has a lot of debts. Well, that would be finances, my friend. <laughs> okay. She, she lied about everything, not just finances. She told me about her, the thing about the, thing the, about money. the money. money. So finances, exactly. She told me she was skinny. She said she had uh, boobs, big ones. I mean, she do, but in good big ones. She said she's got ass cheeks for weeks. She never, t she never told me that she has criminal record. I mean, you added 10 to the rap sheet. I just want to say she might not have told you that she had a criminal record, but you added 10 pages to her criminal record. So she doesn't look like a criminal, though. I'll give you that. She never told me that she stole a credit card and she started using it and she got in trouble and she spent the, uh, time in jail because of that. Holy shit, what an- what? What? I didn't know this. God. What? What? <laughs> what the fuck? Is that- can we verify that? She went to j- she was- she was the scammer? Normally on the 90 Day Fiance, you know, people are like, ooh, it's the other guy. She's the scammer? She's the IT scammer? Oh my god. Hmm. I- who would have thought? There was a credit card that came to the house that we lived in, and I used that credit card to buy, like, groceries and stuff like that. Ah, uh, that's called, uh, theft and stealing and shit. Ooh, that's pretty bad. Ooh, Danielle, what the hell? Oh my god, this is... What? Jesus. You got kids, Danielle, what are you doing that? Oh my god, oh, so that's how bad her money problems is. Take a loan out before you... <laughs> you literally did jail time for stealing. Oh. I mean, I hate how Muhammad speaks to her, but like the facts are right. And are you old when, enough to know that you cannot use something that doesn't belong Muhammad, to you? Will you stop. Yeah, if she's like older than like five years old, she should know. Like you know, don't steal. Don't. You could be in the worst financial place. No, don't. You initiated divorce proceedings. Sean, we're talking about a criminal record about someone doing jail time, and it gets a little heated, and you just say, "Let's move on." You. Yeah. So what? Give me that dress. Just what? No, this is my job. I'll wear it. Let me. I'll sit there, pretend to be you. I'll ask the hard hitting questions. Come on. Are you kidding me? Let's just move on. Let's just, I know you, he claimed you did jail time, but both of you are talking at the same time, so we have to move on. An annulment. As of right now? As of right now. As of right now. Yes. I went. I went. Oh! <laughs> what? She pulled, she did magic trick. What? This is like bringing out a special guest at a concert. As of right now, I play Blue Eyes Black Dragon. <laughs> Oops, white dragon, whatever. All right. What is that, Muhammad? Uh, this is... It looks like a letter of some sort, Sean. It looks like Danielle had been waiting this whole time to serve him papers. God, and she served it like dessert too. She leaned over. She, she was like, get a good look at this. And then she gave it to him. What do you mean by that? This is an annulment. It doesn't have to show in the court record. There is no stamp, no signature, no anything. Oh, shit. Danielle. 
Did you just try and fool everyone on television? God, no signature. Probably should have known when it was written in crayon that it was wrong. God damn it. Danielle, why would you do this? You tried to scare him? Just using scare tactics on television? Annulment means the marriage didn't happen at all. Have you and Louisa ever been intimate? No. What a weird question to ask to follow up everything that has just proceeded. Are the papers real, Sean? Maybe we could ask that question at some point. How, can we verify that they're real? She asked for Webster's definition of annulment. She got it, and then immediately, Are you sleep with Louisa? You sure? You're not fucking that bitch? Not you wanna? Okay. Promise? All right. Just checking. Never. Me and Louisa were only never friends. intimate. No, only friends. Always from the very beginning. From the very beginning. Okay. Never kissed her. No. No. You didn't. You didn't touch her. No finger up. <laughs> finger up the. <laughs> you touch it. Maybe suck it. I don't. It's going through like a whole list of things. You promise. You never kiss. Never tongue in the mouth. No. Tongue in the ear. Tongue in the butt. Mm, okay. You sure? Okay. <laughs> We, we supposed to be only friends, but once I find out that she's trying to be friend with me to be on TV, cut her off my life. What about Gracie? Louisa, I don't, she's, she, I cut her out my life. She a fame whore. Gracie, don't even know her last name. Gracie Macy, I don't know. Who know? Even like, you know, just like met her like maybe four or five times, uh -huh. went to the beach, talked like outside, in the public went to the beach she is a bitch i leave that's how it go with me danny i'm mohammed i forget my name nobody kiss me not even me nobody that's it that's that's it nothing ever ever happened between me and gracie or anybody or else. louisa okay tell me this when we saw the scene of you two at the wedding you said that you could not kiss her yes okay had you guys ever kissed before that Yes. You have. Yes. You yeah, okay, all right. And I'll take this one, Sean. So she basically asked if he'd been intimate with anyone else on that he'd met. He says no unequivocally. Then she asks about why you didn't kiss this bish at the wedding. It was during Ramadan, I believe, or Eid. I'm not sure. And that's a time where you can't indulge in any of that stuff. It's a, a Muslim tradition and he's a religious person. So that's that's well within his rights. Find it weird that they had the wedding during that time though. I gotta be honest. Like usually you'd maybe pick a different month, but that's what that's what we're looking at here. Intimate before that? Yes. You have. You have. Oh. What is the, what was the problem? I don't wanna say like this is very private. Instead of taking care of that problem, she was like fighting with me over it. This is something that no man in the world can accept that. And then- No man in the world? You're selling this like a good trailer, bro. I will not tell you, but I will tell you no man ever in history can make this good. This is something every man ever has died happening. But I won't tell you, it's only, and it goes down there like an elevator going down to hell. But I, but I can't say. Accent evolved in it. I want my sex tonight. If you don't give me my sex tonight, I will, I will, I will call the immigration, I will get you deported. In front of the kids, threatening to get him deported. God damn. You don't fuck me, I'll fuck your life up, son. God, blackmailed into banging. Sounds like the start of a really bad adult film. That's, is that true? That's disgusting, man. Oh God. Ah! Screaming on the floor like a baby wanting candy. She want a different kind of lollipop. God damn. Oh Danielle, God. can you tell us what he's talking about? He has told people that I smell and I you peed do. on him. <laughs> I, I didn't, I knew about the smell pot, the pee pot. Didn't, that is not a mental image that I'm, oh my God, can I go back in life 10 seconds? God. She has some stuff that I don't like. I, I okay, complain about. You know what? I don't even, I don't even want to know. Yeah, 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 yeah. Sean, Sean. Yeah, cut this one off. God. What a way to, what, what a, oh, I didn't know that Danielle was going to bring it up on television. I didn't, she, she played the victim card so hard. I didn't, I didn't expect this to happen. I didn't, ex I didn't, wow. She didn't deny that she was on the floor crying for sex and saying that she would deport him. She just deflected it into something much worse. Wow. Ah. There is no recovering from this, huh? You know, there have been rumors that you were gay. Ah, that's not something that very important because I can be anything but gay. Well, what a, what a way to say that. <laughs> I'm a lot of things, Sean. Gay is not one of them, okay? <laughs> Trust me, you wanna take your shirt off right now, I'll show you gay. That's not me, bitch. Took it like it's a personal insult and stuff. God, it's okay, it's just chill. If you're not, you're not. You don't have to be like so- I'm not that. Started ignoring me, 
treating right. me like crap, calling right. me names. Eternity later. A lot of stuff being said there. I don't know how to even summarize that. I mean, if uh, just don't call your partner names like stupid or dumb, that's 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 wrong. It's a person that you love or have loved, even if you don't anymore, you should have respect for a person. You wouldn't say that about a random person. Why would you say that about someone you care about even more? That's not cool. She had clear expectations, even through the friendship. She thought somehow that them maintaining a friendship means that they're going to get back together. That's wrong on her part. And she also seems to have expectations that every relationship comes with unequivocal love, which it doesn't. That's I wish I wish Danielle, but it, people people suck man that's that's the truth and yeah sometimes you just you, you gotta take that L and all he's done oh no it's like run around the country oh I know that voice this is the crying voice in every show I've ever seen of her at some point she becomes emotional and starts crying and once she starts crying all hell breaks loose oh we made it 18 minutes we made it to <laughs> I don't know how to say this better. My purse is stank. We made it to that. We made it to I pee on you. And now the crying starts. Wow. That's. Yeah, alright. I didn't want to cry, but. So you're crying now to make people feel sorry? <laughs> Do you, don't you know that people got used to you crying like that? <laughs> yeah, Mohammed picks the least uh, opportunistic time of all time to start berating her. You know, when someone's crying, yes, you might have heard it a hundred times, you might be annoyed, but you're on a tell-all. He, he literally, he said almost nothing the first five minutes. And maybe this is one of the moments where he could have just been like, let's have a little breather, I'm a bit heated, you're not taking things too well. But he's like, don't you know crying is people get past that? You People can see past the roots that you have don't you know you're a little baby <laughs> not a big one this person is not a victim this person is good at making people feeling sorry for her yeah that's you know you're not wrong in a very roundabout way her having constant yes people in her life is never gonna propel her to succeed and even without Muhammad you know she's in her 40s like she's had 40 years to try and get to a great position in life and it's been tough for her and sometimes surrounding yourself with the wrong people does not help you grow it sucks it seems to be the, the way that she's doing um, yeah, he's, he's not wrong, but the way that he's saying it is really harsh. I also, she is constantly someone who likes to have that sympathy cast upon her because she cries a lot. She, you know, at some point you got to realize the crying is fine, but it's, it's, the crying is not to get you out of a situation. Great emotional release, but you still have to walk your way through a situation afterwards. Okay. Oh yeah, yeah, okay. She said that's true. Yeah. I didn't have the chance because this is just like not enough time. Basically the tell all comes in two parts. I just condensed it into one, but at the end of the first part that, you know, they draw it out. Muhammad is like, you didn't give me enough time somehow. And they didn't say all they needed to. And in part two, it gets way more heated, which is why I combined them. I don't need him or any man to make me happy or to help me live my life. Well, that's a big fat lie. I mean, you expected him to one, love you, two, financially help you. You still keep his last name. You're here on the show. You've constantly chasing him around everywhere. Come on. I, you shouldn't need a man, but you seem to think that you do, so. So now we're on tell all part two. Uh, things about to go down really hard. I, I, I saw more of his suffering from this interview. I don't think he enjoyed himself here either. I don't know, I just think they both entered this for their own reasons, both of them. Yeah, this guy Lexi basically said it the right way. These two both had expectations that weren't met and then they blamed each other for them. Both of them are great at blaming each other and not taking any of the blame. Have you seen in the time that we've watched this, any of them take responsibility for their own actions and say, yeah, you're right, I am really bad financially. And maybe that is a problem that I need to work on going forward. Because here's the thing with the relationships. When someone leaves, you have literally only yourself. And I don't mean yourself to blame, but yourself to work on. You can look at it and be like, why did this happen to me? What can I do to look at my personal stuff? And then if I meet someone else, how can I be even more ready? 
because usually I wish everyone came perfect, but everyone comes with a set of problems. And even when you find the right person, it's not like you're gonna be so amazing that you're gonna solve all your problems, but hopefully you'll be in a good enough space and the other person is as well, that both of you can mend each other's problems and nobody expects that of someone. Don't go to people broke, that's never gonna work. So I understand it, it's not a joke. And people put a lot of time, a lot of money, a lot of energy into it. Watching this story, it's like, I don't want people to think that all of us are like that. Yo, that goal is actually right. I mean, I probably won't say it much because I like the chaos, but probably a really tough, long, arduous process. And sometimes couples on the show make it work and it's really beautiful. And that's why that whole visa thing exists. You can find love in 90 days. It's rare, but I'm, I'm sure you can. There's probably circumstances that we don't see on the show, but <laughs> I'll tell you what, lady. Colt, Big Ed, and these two, hilarious. I'm gonna put a Jorge in that other goal next. What's his name? His name is George and, and Fiza. I like calling him Jorge for no reason. This is what happened <laughs> in their relationship. She's older, he's younger. Yeah, what a great, wow. Okay, Dr. Full, that's, why don't you fix other people's? She's older, he's younger. That, that's it, that's the problem. Kyle, when I asked that question, you kind of made a weird face. What'd you think? Dude, it's just like. He's fat, he's thin. It's an issue, they don't go together. And you got married for a short time and then you decide to just walk away. Walk away after what? Why teacher, this is a teachable moment in the series. I think I've watched both of these two uh, goon heads long enough to know neither of them know how to fight. And that is probably one of the most important parts of a relationship ever. Because inevitably, no matter how good you and your partner are, in a realistic, healthy relationship, you're gonna you're gonna fight. I don't mean you're gonna Mike Tyson fucking punch people. I'm saying that you have to learn how to express yourself in a healthy way. Every time this guy is um, questioned about his logic, his anything, his demeanor shifts from calm to aggressive and defensive. That's because he doesn't know how to explain himself and doesn't want to in a way that people are going to accept. Whenever Danny is pushed against a wall she starts crying so people back off her those two are very unhealthy you got to figure out a healthy medium you got to be able to communicate not close off yourself actually talk things out but in a way that lets people know that yeah I appreciate your feedback I can understand what you're saying this is what I feel you have to have good discourse in order to move forward you can't just be screaming at people how is that ever going to help in a relationship since when has arguing at the top of your voice ever actually sorted an issue out honestly this is bad I, I really think this is bad and it's not like I'm holier than thou I learned the hard way for many times of not being good but you figure it out because you don't want the same thing to constantly happen but these two are like literally clowns just doing the same thing blaming everyone else besides themselves how are they gonna find love this way i did apply for jobs like thousands of jobs thousands. And i never got hired you know why because you suck god he applied for thousands of jobs i want to see why because people they know me and they look or like my name on the internet what they find out that's your fault man what you decided to be on the show how is this anybody's fault but yours you know why because people know that i'm a shit and that's your fault i was not known to be a shit before you you exposed me that's your fault i cannot get job in this country if i go back to tunisia nobody care but i don't want to go there i'd rather get a shit job here than get a great job there america fuck you yeah. this to the other couples what was the most shocking thing that you heard during that conversation that she was begging yeah so uh this is going nowhere as you can see you can see the flames coming from the back of muhammad's head even when uh, i think her name is paula is asking a question muhammad just talks over her louder because that's how he thinks he can get his point across i mean he's he feels like he's not being heard but even when people are giving him a chance to talk it's not like he's making complete sense either Jesus. The moment you try and do anything, someone comes along and tries to stop you. Ah! So you can see that something's bubbling under right now. And then Sean asked, hey, you know that Miami conversation, what's the worst thing that happened? For me, it's the fact that the popo got called and Daniel's like, you see what he does? He calls the police on me in my own country. I just found that very American and funny. And no matter what, how is that person, you have to have sex with love, him or but her. But if I love my husband, I would like to make love to him all the time. <laughs> oh, I like this girl, man. <laughs> what? 
Yeah, that's a good relationship though. I mean, in a bad one, you don't know. He admitted she's a stanky banky down there, so I don't know if you want to make love to her, you know. Now if you guys I don't got think you were ever in love. That's the problem. I don't think you were ever in love because if you're in love, do you, you want to make it work. Like you want to be together and like make just nature, things man. work, you, you know? Kyle, tell yeah. me what you were saying. That's you just made a point. Yeah, I just want to Hey, Sean, can you figure it out? <laughs> Jesus Christ. She just sits there. When people are like, 10 people could be talking, she's like, God damn, this is, whew, that's better. Anyway, carry on, guys. We didn't have sex until September. Oh, sh And so we not married when? when? Married? July. July? Get out of here. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, I don't Ramadan don't last that long. God damn, Ramadan. If I ever get married, I want I want people to, to be like get a room during the wedding. I don't know, waiting three months. Mm, damn, that ain't right. I don't know, man. That's that's crazy, man. Maybe maybe I'm just a horn dog. But, I'll call her Mrs. My last name, Mrs. Leo, and just. Mm. Sorry. We had sex before we wife. got married and when we were when I seen you in Doha. So what's the difference? You. I mean, nice, I think. Yeah, what is the difference? Actually, Danielle brings up a good point. She wasn't way different then. She was exactly the same. He had sex with her. What's wrong now, Muhammad? Because you do not know that nobody will have sex with someone like you. <gasps> oh shit. Okay. Well, that's <laughs> Whoa. Try not to hear that. That's that's very mean. <laughs> that's horrible. I asked her to to go and see a doctor. She got halitosis of the poon. Is that can we say that? That's really bad, man. She for for once and maybe probably the only time I fully support Danielle walking out. No, don't nobody want to hear your business like that on on national television in front of millions of people to see. That's you know you don't you don't do that to people no matter what. That's lack of loyalty, lack of trust. I mean, when you get intimate with someone, you expect that that stays between you two no matter what. <laughs> I can't, I can't. I don't know what Muhammad was thinking, but it was wrong, man. Muhammad. That was so what? mean. Muhammad. Of course it's so mean. Yeah, you don't say then that to a woman. Did you ever have I would say it to you a woman. Husband, I would what say it to a woman. Have. What respect do you have? As a person, my man. As a person. As someone who wouldn't want that done to them. As any person in society who's like, if someone said, Oh, Leo, ball stank. <laughs> Be like, oh, now everybody knows that. I'm gonna get bad reviews on Google from every goal. Damn, that's really bad. You wouldn't say that. And and he he said that about someone who he claimed to love. That's that's a distrust. That's a that's breaking every rule, man. That's bad. Back you are date. trying to make me look like a no, bad. No, you are making you're 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 yourself look like it. Yes, look what you're you just said. You're talking bad about these women. Well, you made her walk no, away. because, she because you, you didn't consummate your marriage. No. Because you didn't. Donna, now would be the time in which you say silencio. I'm the host, and you guys are gross. And then you. And everyone shuts up. This would be the time where you just go back to reality because 20 people are talking and it sounds like community center where they asked who would like more money and why. Sean? Sean? Oh, she's she's lost. She's out. She's staring into space. She's thinking about what she wants for dinner. Sean, sh I t I t I'm telling you right now, the shrimp is cooking, my lass. The, there is beautiful dinner waiting for you to get home. Beautiful family. If you could just you know, for five seconds, just go back to reality. You know, just maybe stop this argument from happening, Sean. Marriage, I don't you care. have no reason. I don't care how no. much like Sean, I have you love to defend myself. That's not the way you talk to a woman. No matter how she is, no matter what she done to you. Yeah, I mean, I agree with Paula, but this is not the way you talk to a person. Like, it doesn't matter if she's a woman or a man. You do not air their dirty laundry, pun not intended, to the world at all. Not to your friends, not to other people. Shit talking other people is just bad karma, honestly. It's just, I, I don't like it personally and I think that what he did is just really, you didn't have any right to do that. It's not your body. If you That's want people to treat hard. you right, be nice to people no, and be right. You know, when people scream that on me across the show after they call their ex-wife spoon stanky, that's how you know it's real. Be nice, be kind. It's very, you know, you're just like, oh shit, you scream that into me. <laughs> that's how you really get the point across. Of course, because you put me like, with drunk people trying to make me look bad. <laughs> Who's drunk? You are drunk. <laughs> I guess this is the equivalent of a few good men, you know, where people are like, you want the truth? You can't handle the truth. This is Muhammad's version. You drunk? You're all drunk. It's just, that's 
him. I think here's your problem right now. Arguing with a bunch of people and then calling them drunk when it has no substantial evidence that they are that. Pretty much you lost the argument once you start name calling people, but like you can see this. I mean, how can anyone sit with him and have a, a honest conversation if this is going to be the outcome? This, this is childish. It's stupid. It's horrible. You were mean to someone and you're still trying to look like the decent person. You're just not it. You got to accept that you you f this up, man. Name, Sean, I, Sean. I, I nope. with her. Trying to make me say it. Okay, when I say it, you don't like it. Nobody was trying to make you say it. Sean, Sean, any, like, I swear to God, are you on dessert? What are you thinking about right now? Are you thinking about if the world is flat or not? Sean, at any point, just, just a little more control in the situation. Anything, Sean. She just paid there to sit and look like a, a statue. No, I don't like it because she of her. She didn't like it. You know, it's not about us. It's, it's about about you make it feel her. That's the reason. Hey, hey, I, hey, made, hey, I gave hey, you the hey, reason hey, why hey, I did hey, not hey, have hey, sex hey, with hey, her. Hey, 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 yo, yo, yo. Yo, hey, 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 buddy. Oh, yo, 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 hey, 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 buddy, 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 boy, yo, yo. I'm gonna stop fighting you now. And then he starts fighting him. I think you're getting your messed up, you know. You don't say junk freaking people. Oh, oh, he's... <laughs> They've been fighting over this girl, being mean, everything, there's been problems, everyone's arguing. Literally minutes after he called people drunk, this guy's like, Hey, 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 wait, 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 did you just call us drunk? Like, it, it, oh, the moment passed and now he's going back into it. This is what he's angry about. This has nothing to do with anything, bro. Ah, oh, this is so funny. The truth, you are drunk. Bar, there is no Please. freaking drunk the people here, so get your straight. You got okay. me? The First bar. of all, respect, you got me? respect me Wait when you talk. And Do you stop, got stop, me? Stop, stop. No, I didn't get you. Gentlemen. You know what? Actually, Sean has zero power. She's She she actually is trying right now, and nobody is listening. Oh my god, Sean. I wish I could interview Sean and see what she thinks of everything. She's... I, I really like her, but for the wrong reasons, but I do like her. Dude. Debar, please help me out. What you, you want to see what I can and, do? And yes, show me. Right now. You're shaking. Okay. Yes, show me. <laughs> Muhammad. No, no, no. You need to like... Do you hear the background? Sean's like, Devar, please help me out and stop, stop talking right now. This is the nicest way to say shut the fuck up I've ever heard. Please help me out by stop and stop talking. That is Sean, you absolute genius. You relax, okay? Gentlemen. Oh my God, it took 20 minutes, but Sean actually gets control back in the room after a big fight. It's really, I just gotta say, it's kind of a little bit hard to, you know, seem intimidating when you're doing this. That seems like you're very chillaxed out there. I mean, that's that's my boy, Muhammad. Yeah, yeah, Danielle left, she comes back. Um, and as she comes back, the most mature thing that ever happens, happens, psych. <laughs> Muhammad decides to leave. Muhammad, are you leaving us? Yeah. Muhammad decides he's had enough. So Muhammad goes backstage and this is sort of the end. I guess the show is like almost ended, but Muhammad is like, yo, I've had enough. That dude who, he's scaring me, so I'm gonna leave. And he does not return to the show. But I don't know what he says, so let's see. I was trying to protect Daniel from saying that information for over two years now, over two years, until she said it by herself on camera. And then when I was like, <clears throat> if she said it by herself, it's not your um, prerogative or it's not your information to then expand on. That's her body. You, you can't, you can't be doing that. This is not you protecting her. You should have never said it at all ever. That's, that's really as simple as that one gets. There's no high ground here to take. I have to say something to stop these people. It wasn't trying to be like insulting her or like saying, say anything about, like bad about her. I was trying to give a fact. No, but what? Trying to give a fuck because I never give a fuck, but I'm trying to give a fuck. Yeah, ask me. I don't have a fuck to give each. Nobody is going like there is no man in this life will enjoy having sex with some with a woman who has a bad, a bad smell. Here's the thing, and this is a very again important thing that we need to do when we talk to people. This man in his head is like my intent was to help her, but he doesn't accept how he came across was really bad. And sometimes, even though your intent in your own head, you see something and you're like, ah, oh, this is how it. I, all I was trying to do is that. If you make someone feel a certain way, it's still, it's still, 
your responsibility to be like, okay, I didn't intend for you to feel like that, but I understand why. I, I get that you're doing that and, and I didn't mean for that to happen. Cause then it gives you a better chance to actually have your point. If you really just wanted a hot hole, you might as well be like, yes, I went on to camera. I say she's merely down the booth. Then it's like, okay, so you're actually just trying to be a dickhead, fine. But if your actual intent was to help and to care for her, you've obviously hurt this woman and you need to understand the way you did it is the reason that it happened. It's not just a fact, <laughs> it's an, an opinion. That's not a fact. I took her out to eat many times. And oh, did you smell it? What, oh, I took her out to eat many, oh. Seafood. Ugh. Please, let's change it. Please, let's let's go to somewhere else and leave away from everybody and let's disappear from this world and start our life. Oh shit! Disappear from this world and start our life. This motherfucker's like Danielle. Let's go to Mars, bitch. I heard Pluto's good this time of year. Let's do it. It's not even a a damn a damn planet anymore. Let's leave this world. Let's go to a different Milky Way, bitch. Travel with me, Muhammad, the guy who ratted you out to everyone. While the conversation continues on set, backstage, Muhammad reaches his breaking point. So as Sean said, at the end of it, Muhammad says after he wanted to start a life with her somewhere else, she didn't do that. He was overwhelmed upon even arriving here. And he now reaches this point where he's like, this interview is over. There is a limit and everybody has like so much can take. If you pass that limit, that person is going to go like mad or upset or crazy or whatever you, you want to say. It. Ultimately, Muhammad decides to go. And that's how the show ends. He leaves without really offering uh, his communication. And I think this is a great indicator of who he is as a person and how their relationship or just relationships in general for him are not going to work out well and i think like beyond this we can look at their relationships and look at both of their issues but for today let's focus on muhammad this man literally decided to quit an interview where he said he only gave 20 percent of his reasons he felt that he didn't even get to speak but when they gave him time to speak he didn't elaborate on things he just threw out insults hurled things uh called everyone drunk tried to shift blame and then ended up leaving when he realized it was going nowhere and to me that says in any conversation you have with a person if things are not going the way you want them to you're just going to exit the conversation and leave and that creates uh, a boundary where it's like you can't actually have communication because if you hit your limit, people are just going to push you to your limit and you're just going to leave and shut down. And the more often you do that, the less that you have one, to learn to be better and two, to actually progress the conversation and to get somewhere with the, with the desired result. So for as long as he does that, there's only so far of a relationship that he can have. I'm not saying that he can't have a great one, but like it'll be a lot harder or and you'd have to take someone who really is okay with not getting closure and conversations and okay with someone walking away. And that's a very hard thing to do, I think. So <clears throat> in this episode of The Tell All, we see that it wasn't just Danielle who is the problem and Muhammad has a lot to learn about life. It was a pretty crazy thing and I do have one surprise for you. There's another Tell All and you'll see maybe one or two more episodes about them. I'm very invested into how they progress with their relationship. Spoiler alert, there's at least two more episodes that I have to give you before that last Tell All. But the last one is even more crazy than this one. So hopefully we'll have an update. Hopefully they would have learnt. That's sort of something that I'm looking out for. And I also hope that you like the series because my therapy session is over. Thank you so much for coming. I'm going. And hey, if I could offer you any piece of advice, don't ever say someone smell it boos on television. Keep that in private, you know? That's an insult that you should probably keep to yourself. Also, maybe do something nice for someone. That would be cool. Thanks everyone. If Shona, if you're looking at this, call me. But not in that sense. Call me so I can teach you how to get control of the situation, girl. You need that. But take care, everyone. Thank you, and I'll see you on the next one. She ain't even got a ass. She did a dash and bit a last. You know a dash and she knows.